Hello from Big Sur. Big Sur. Yes, Big Sur. <laughs> and we are on day number three up in Big Sur. And we have our camper, Fuzzball. Hey, Spectre Nugget. Spectre Nugget. Hey. Hello. <laughs> so, the verdict on Big Sur. Well, A, check that out. Can't beat that view. I mean, holy enchiladas. That's like the best view ever. And what's my thoughts on Big Sur? Okay, so there's three things that I would consider. It is worth the drive. It's insanely curvy. The top speed, or I should say the speed limit, is like maybe 30, 40, most of these parts. And I would definitely recommend the drive alone. That's what makes this whole journey worth it. It's insane. You got oceans on one side, mountains on the other, it's fog. Two, if you're coming here to send some emails, get some business <laughs> done, well, let me tell you one thing, that's not gonna it's happen. It's not gonna happen, There's, I tried. <laughs> There's no service. There's no service if you even brought a wishing uh, well and dropped some pennies in it hoping you get cell service. There's none. From, I would say, Gorda all the way to Monterey, maybe Car Carmel. 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 Yeah. You're not going to find any cell service. Number three. Oh, so if you don't have cell service, they'll at least have Wi-Fi. Nope. That's what I thought. <laughs> and that was a slap to the face because that inevitably never happened. We searched for probably an hour this morning. She works remote. She needed Wi-Fi. There is no Wi-Fi to be found. And in fact, when you do find Wi-Fi, that's where the next factor that gets interesting. It's the speed of dial-up. Yep. So there is three hotels that we found some Wi-Fi at. They're quite stingy with their Wi-Fi, which I don't blame them. But the speeds that this Wi-Fi we're working at was like dealing with Windows 95. It works, but if you want Netflix and a movie with Big Sur in your background, you gotta look somewhere else. It's not gonna happen. But that's what makes it great. And exactly, that's that's. I would say that that what what makes this whole entire journey and this area amazing. You you have this to look at rather than your phone screen. And it gets you away from electronics, which I'm being a hypocrite using electronic right now documenting this but you have this this and the adventure yoda so in my opinion do big serve when you want to get away from society the places that i would recommend seeing are the drive itself is unreal i would take from the bottom of gorda all the way up to monterey is it's utterly amazing number two i would say there's spots that you want to stop at so I, we ran into this uh, Tree Bones Resort by accident. Looked amazing. I, we didn't actually stay there, but it, it was really pretty. And then there's a lot of cafes along the way that are worth stopping at. They have really good coffee. There's art galleries that are amazing and places that you want to camp out. This is what I would recommend. We camped out at the uh, Lime Kiln that Park, State, State yeah. Park, and it was amazing because you dropped down into this bridge, which you'll see in the video. And you camp out underneath this bridge that goes right to a beach. Um, there's also the actual name is for a reason. There's these giant lime kilns in the back. And you literally hike through this redwood forest that is probably the prettiest forest I've been oh, to in a while. beautiful. It's insane. Like It's worth a stop even if you don't camp there. Yeah. You've got these towering redwoods. There's a river flowing. It's quiet, serene. Like, if you are stressed out... You go to this place, you won't even know what the word stress is. These giant lime kilns are huge, and I actually was quite impressed. I thought it was gonna be touristy, like this is gonna be cheesy as heck. It was not. It was amazing. They're huge, they have history to them, and I definitely would recommend, if you just wanna see it, check it out. If you have the option to camp there, camp. It's worth it. So here's another trick in the book. Every camp gun you drive by is, and my dog is, <laughs> He's Running on his away. way back to Lime Kiln. <laughs> He's like, this is this sucks here. This view is sucks. Everything sucks. Take me back to the kennel. Hey, all right, hold on. We're just gonna pause here one second. Come here. Get back here, Inspector Nugget. Get back up here. Thank you. So uh, another thing too. People ask, well, can we get busted for staying places? Like, obviously, we are camping here, and you know. You gotta deal with Inspector Nugget, who's just like, I need to inspect this guy's leg. All right, that's 
like I said, I there's a lot of things happening in Big Sur. I'll tell you that right now. You got there's just a lot of, a lot of excitement. People ask, what do I do with an RV? All right, there's a lot of no camping signs you will see on this drive. That's I'll either get flack for this or I won't. I camp out in the areas that say no camping all the time with my RV. And why that is because, A, campgrounds are always full. Number two, RV resorts are, there's some that are really good, there's others that are overpriced. There's none along the stretch. So we took our chances. We camped out at some spots over here. We did one night at the campground in the state park, which here's a little inside secret. They're always full, regardless of where you see them. And you'll see a sign that says, campground full and people are like oh I'll never get a reservation you do have to make reservations ahead of time however here's the secret half the people that make reservations a year ago Aunt Jemima couldn't make it out here and camp out so they don't show so those places become vacant so the trick is is you go down to the bottom of the office or wherever the campground is and you ask hey did anybody not show tonight and some, some campgrounds will say, yeah, we're full. Others will say, no, we have an opening. Lime Kiln is a pretty popular spot. There's a clear as day sign at the beginning that said the campground was full. And in fact, it was not. We went down to the bottom, he says, I have one or two, two spots, one spot's open, you can take one. And I never made a reservation. I didn't even know that this campground would be full. It was a good spot too. And it was a really good spot. So I paid the fee and got my spot. Just simply ask and you might get lucky. In fact, odds are you will get lucky because there's a lot of people that make reservations and they never show. If this is what Big Sur essentially is, but however, there's other spots that you can see. There's mountainous areas, there's waterfalls. The Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Beach is really pretty Pfeiffer too. Beach is really good. There's just a lot of areas that in this area, it's not just oceans, there's trees, redwoods. I mean, Lime Kiln, it was like walking in Sequoia National Park. The time from the bottom to the top, the speed limit's slow, there's a lot of construction. In fact, there's one area of construction that I was like, eh, we sat for 10 minutes until they gave us the go ahead to go through. So from one end to the other, I would say it's 50 miles, yeah. say 50 miles roughly, and it'll take you a couple hours. The sp average speed limit's 30 miles an hour. People drive like idiots, so expect to go slower. And if someone sees one sea otter floating in the ocean, they back up all the traffic. So just be prepared for that. Uh, this thing's very slow, so that made things quite smooth for us. Uh, if you're thinking about it, do Big Sur. It's well worth it. The views are absolutely breathtaking. It's quiet, especially the time of year that you go. We went in November, uh, and they said that it's the quietest time of the year. We haven't seen much people. I mean, you're talking, here's, there's one truck, and there's a car coming this way. This parking lot where we're at? is completely empty. There's not one other person here. I imagine in the summer, this is probably like a flea market. There's people everywhere. So depending on what time of year you want to go, I would say November is pretty awesome. The downfall of November, it's a little foggy, it's a little chilly, I'm wearing a jacket, but if I was to do Big Sur all over again, and I, or I was gonna recommend it, I would say November is the, hands down the best time to go. Don't bring your laptop. And don't bring your laptop. Why don't we bring the laptop? Because there is no reception. There's no, no reception. Wi -Fi, no nothing. No nothing. There, you don't need your laptop. Exactly. So check out the video that we're going to intertwine with this. You'll see some of the scenery. You'll see what it, the views are like. And uh, in my opinion, it's well worth the drive. And if you're in California or if it's on a bucket list item, knock it off your list because you will not be disappointed. And that includes this. Enjoy. Signing off. Signing off. <laughs> <laughs> off the cliff we go. We're swimming in the sea foam. <laughs> da, 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 da.